Rex. Son. What's up, guys? Beast of Thoughts time. It's Beast of Thoughts Beast live, Thoughts. episode 95. <laughs> guys, it's episode 95. We are ancient now. We are officially old. Yeah. I know. Wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> what did you just say to me? I will come up there to Canada and kick in your door. I said you're old, Brian. You are an old man, and you know it. You I am muting Robbie that. right now. <laughs> Don't do that. Man, the old jokes, like right off the bat. The old jokes <laughs> I, said, I was old, too. I said, we're old, Brian. Oh, damn, 95, though. 95. That's a big number. Yeah, man. We've been going this for a long time, and, and yeah. it really feels good to actually be getting there. I remember listening to some of my old favorite podcasts back in the day, Podcast Beyond. I remember when they get to like episode two hundred, how long it took. Now we're reaching the precipice of the one hundred. We, we got we got we got to do something special when we hit that one hundred mark, guys. It's been a long time. It's been a couple of years. And uh, I don't want to give any spoilers, but there's definitely going to be nudity. Yeah, no shirts, no underwear, <laughs> no Just shirts, no shoes. But you get serviced. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're, we're on episode 99 right now, right? 95. Oh, damn it. <laughs> 95, yeah. I'm going to jump four so we can have that shit next week. <laughs> Can't wait for that nudity to start. What is this show to come? We are not giving quality content here. I hope you're all enjoying them. No, that's cool. It's, hey, it's yeah, it just depends on what you're into. You yeah. <laughs> just because you don't like it, Robbie, doesn't make it bad. It's like my 95, like it. Robbie. Just because you don't like it, it, don't make it bad. <laughs> So I've been watching. Uh, I, I watched straight out of Compton this afternoon. We got have, back home from Vermont. I went to Vermont with the wife. Had a wonderful, laid back weekend at a bed and breakfast. No Wi-Fi. Ooh. Yeah, I saw your tweet. <laughs> yeah. Ooh. No Wi-Fi. But had a nice weekend anyway. Ate more than one human being should possibly eat in a weekend. <laughs> like it's a, I might have set a world record. Not sure. <laughs> uh, it was a beautiful weekend. Came back. Uh, went from relaxing bed and breakfast to straight out of Compton, the movie. The Damn. extended director's cut, which is nearly like three hours long. I don't know if you guys have seen it. It's a pretty good movie. It. It's a really good movie. I haven't seen the director's cut. Wow. Yeah, but it uh, it uh, it tickles that... Uh, that gangster rap '90s love. The hood shit. That, the hood shit. Yeah. Oh, it tickles all right. So I've been listening to all '90s rap since I turned off the uh, turned off the uh, movie. I've been having fun with that. It got me all amped up now. Amped up. You guys didn't hear the pre the little pre show. That we, <laughs> the Briar was going crazy. Serious <laughs> hardcore thug delicious shit. And, and you guys gotta ask him in the comments about this because he's got hardcore lyrics. I remember. I remember. You never heard of any guardian say the shit that he's been saying. <laughs> oh my the dirtiest guardian. I'm the dirtiest yes. guardian. Yes, you are. <laughs> so, guys, I wanted to address some of the people who have been in my, my YouTube channel in the comment section. I had some issues the last couple of weeks, and I promise that it will be gone and done from this point on. I, I've really been missing the show. Last week I had a, a situation where the guy wouldn't come and do my internet. and he, he got ended the up show doing, done anyway, though. Yeah, I stayed on my damn phone. I didn't give a damn. Yeah. You made it happen. Yeah, that you was some nineties like, rap shit. Trooper. That was some nineties rap shit. They don't call you the beast for nothing. Hashtag <laughs> <Same> beast. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I'm really happy to be here, guys. Uh, I've been missing you guys. I've been missing everybody in the comments, and uh, I'm ready to get this number ninety five started. Ninety five. Ninety five. That's. I, awesome. I don't know if I like it as much as I did sixty nine, but um, ninety five. You'll have still, to go. You'll have to pass ninety five. Ninety six could be something though. Oh yes, you're <laughs> right. <69. laughs> Absolutely right. We'll man. keep the innuendos going all night. Stick with us. <laughs> all night. That's what the show is about, right? <laughs> I mean, yeah, this is what we're supposed to do on a Sunday, anyway. I have been playing um, bed and breakfast all weekend. What have you guys been playing? Now, let me get this right. If I were you, I would say the wife and I went to a place where we stayed with no Wi-Fi. Right? No Wi-Fi. Wife and I, no Wi-Fi. It makes sense in some weird twist. Wife and I, no Wi-Fi. Damn. <laughs> so, I actually uh, spent some time on my Xbox One uh, all week. Uh -huh. I really haven't been doing any PlayStation 4 gaming. Uh, you wow. guys know about the PlayStation 4 having issues with the network. That day spawned a change in me. I made a video about it. 
Uh, I kind of, ages. Yeah, <laughs> now we're, it's a whole new genre, but he's sticking <laughs> with the music. Um, so that day I went over to my Xbox One, I was playing around, and I went to Ori and the Blind Forest, and I was only like 17% complete with the game, and I got into it, and I actually really dug into it. And I was unable to pull myself away from that game until the credits rolled on Friday night. You beat it. Oh. Yes. I beat that game. I love that game. Uh, at this point, it's the best game I've ever played on my Xbox One. Uh, the world is totally amazing. Just watching it and experiencing it, it's it's one of those games kind of like Journey. Like when you get through it, you have this emotional epiphany. Yeah. And the way that it's presented, it's all hand-drawn. It's just a beautiful world. The music is so awesome. All these abilities that this little thing gets throughout the game really complement the play style of the game. So it's if like you don't know, but I want to I want to introduce this game a little bit because it's a little bit older now. People might have kind of forgotten about this one. It's a two D platformer. Uh, I would say it's like it's almost movie quality. Yeah. Like the animation yeah. is really nice and. What you're used to seeing in 2D platformers is a lot of reused assets throughout the world, right? Mm -hmm. It's like you get like kind of blocks, like Mario style blocks, where they just kind of reuse this block to build the world. This game, everything is hand drawn, everything is beautiful. Everything uh, the game the controls are tight as hell. I didn't finish it, Beastly. I'm I'm actually jealous. I haven't had a time to finish it. Maybe this will kind of spawn me to jump back into it. Well, I, I made some New Year's resolutions, guys, uh, and we didn't get a chance to really talk about it because we've been kind of away doing our own things. But one of the re resolutions that I made was that I decided I wanted to step back from buying every new game as soon as it comes out because mm -hmm. I'm a YouTuber and try to enjoy some of the stuff, some of these gems that I bought that I know were amazing and, and see them through. And uh, yeah. Ori was actually the first game that I did. And I'm really, really excited and happy that I did. It's one of those experiences that you, I feel like you have to have, especially if you come from the old school. Briar, you might know what I mean. Some people really enjoyed Castlevania. I know that you did, and I don't know if you ever played Symphony of the Night, which is the PlayStation 1 Castlevania, which is the seminal Castlevania experience, in my opinion, and probably in, in the opinion of many people. The game was amazing when it came out. It does not it, it, stay it, the test of time, though. Oh, Symphony of the Night absolutely does. No. We need to play that again. Game controls like garbage. No, it doesn't. It's, <laughs> it's not. It's incredible still to this day. Even the controls. We're going to fight about that one. All right, we'll but, fight. <laughs> but um, Ori in the Blind Forest takes a lot of inspiration from Symphony of the Night because there's all types of special abilities you get throughout the game. You level them up as you progress throughout the game. And it's just so many things to do. I mean, it's, a open, it's kind of an open world, just like Castlevania. There's not a set path that you can go. You just go until you feel, until you realize you can't go any further, and there's something that you need to go there. And then you continue to go throughout the map and, and basically explore until you find the assets you need to get there. And it was just a really fun, fulfilling experience. Kate sat there and watched me. She was in between watching me play that game and watching uh, Arrow for like the last week. <laughs> but, and she was on her laptop watching that game, laptop watching that game. But it was a really, really great game, and that's really what I've been doing all, all week. And now that I'm done with that, I'm trying to decide. Maybe I'll let the people in the comment section let me know what I should do. Uh, either The Witcher 3 or Fallout 4, I'm going to go ahead and finish that. Mm. So that's going to be a hard choice. I actually think I enjoyed Fallout 4 a little bit more than The Witcher for my own personal taste. But I'm trying to go ahead and... I, I never even played Shadows of Mordor. And I know, you, I know you guys remember when I bought that. Yeah. yeah. Never played it once. Never even saw the opening in introduction. So. Oh, really? No kidding. No, it's kind of like uh, F Far Cry. You know, some people bought Far Cry and never even played any. Yeah, what kind of an asshole would do that? I mean, yeah, some people, play, right? man. We don't, we don't know anyone who would do that, right, guys? I mean, I mean, can you imagine no what kind of fuck, fuck boy, that's what they called in the hood in the 90s, <sighs> what fuck boy would buy that game and not play it I wouldn't go that all? far, but... That's what, that's what they call it. That's, the that's really mean. Yeah, <laughs> I haven't I haven't been this upset since upset since Scar killed Mufasa. Man, I am really this hurts. Gets you right in the heartstrings, eh, Brian? Yeah. This is so good. This is so good. Right, Bobby, so, what have you been playing? Oh, sir. Oh, great timing. He had to. Oh, he, I think he's coughing and farting at the same time. No, sorry. I had to, <laughs> no, I had to cough a bit. I wasn't going to cough in the microphone, but um. <laughs> All right, so this week I have been playing something that I'm sure you guys would not expect me to be playing. So during Christmas week, I guess Boxing Week, it's called here in Canada, like the Boxing Week sale, I ordered Guitar Hero Live. And uh, so it came here, I'd say four days after I ordered it, it came here. I got it set up, got the guitar set up, and 
man, it feels like you're 2006 all over again, just jamming on the guitar, playing songs. It was a lot of fun, and it's an experience that has been away for such a long time. And it's different, too, because it's got, like, the whole live-action thing, and it's got, like, the music videos, and the guitar is way different, too, because there's, like, the two sets of buttons now instead of, like, just one row. I mean, I've had a lot of fun with it, and I've been playing and getting better and better, and it's a lot of fun, but it's really hard compared to the old games. I know, this game has, like, a music streaming service, too, right? So you you just constantly are getting new songs to play? Yeah, Guitar Hero TV. They constantly are adding new songs into the Guitar Hero TV, and then that's added to the set list of the game, and they're all free. Right. The idea is that there's a microtransaction system. You buy these plays, essentially, and it allows you to play a song. You only get a certain amount of them, but you get coins in games, so you don't really have to buy them. And oh, wow. Overall, it's awesome, though. I mean, you constantly... They're always adding new music every week. It's wonderful. I love that they're doing that. That's, that's something I've actually been really wanting to do. When I went to Ohio for uh, my vacation, my, my little nephew and uh, my sister-in-law, they were playing Guitar Hero. I think it's Guitar Hero on the Nintendo Wii. Oh. And so they pulled out the old school, and I never really got into it. I had a blast playing it. This new uh, Guitar Hero is the one where you see the live action uh, audience. Correct? Yeah, it's more almost realistic or like serious. It's like even the like, guitar has changed quite a lot, and it's more. it looks like more like a real guitar now. It's not like the green, red, and yellow buttons. It's actual so, like black and white frets. Now, now, the audience reacts to whether or not you're actually playing the, the guitar correctly, right? Where oh, yeah, if you suck, people will boo you, and you'll feel like shit. It did, sucks. They throw, <laughs> did they throw, like, tomatoes or panties? I mean, what did you get, Robbie? Did, were people cheering there you There will be, like, a beer bottle or two thrown. You'll see it. Yeah. They actually do throw stuff occasionally, yeah. <laughs> Only if you're playing, like, really shitty, though, like, missing every note. Then they get really upset. So, uh, how far have you gotten into this game? This has been the, the thing that you've been playing predominantly, and uh, what would you say as far as the people who are watching the show, is it something you recommend for, for people to pick up? I absolutely would recommend this. I mean, I did not expect to get into it. You know, I thought it would be a lot like the old Guitar Hero, but I like it even better. I really love the changes they've made, and it's a ton of fun. Like, it's just... It feels like a game that's been gone for so long. Getting back into it, it feels refreshing because it's been away for such a long time, and I absolutely would recommend it. It's wow. tough, though. It's a lot more difficult because there's two sets of buttons, so you have to remember your brain, like, oh, i got to press the black one, and then i got to switch to the white one, and it's it's definitely harder, but it's very fun. Wow. The I thing love that, the Two things stick out to me about this game is I remember watching YouTube videos of, like, you know, like, 10-year-old, 11-year-old kids playing, like, the hardest difficulty on God. Through the fire and flames. You remember yeah. seeing that shit? Oh, my God, it was intense. Is it? Does it have, like, a difficulty that's, like, super tough? Oh, yeah, and it's yeah. probably arguably harder because the button yeah. layout is way more difficult now. There's two sets of buttons, so you got to switch rows, and sometimes you got to hold, like, both rows with two fingers. It's really crazy. And it's you harder. can play two players, right? Or three yeah. players with a mic. If you have a mic, you can sing along. Yeah, two guitars, one mic. I do have two guitars, but I we don't have a microphone, so mm -hmm. yeah. Wow. I really, blast, I had a lot of fun in that rock band era. You know, it it got to the point rock band got so popular that it crossed in the mainstream. Yeah, um, Guitar Hero, I felt like it was more popular with gamers, where rock band actually crossed over to the to the mainstream, and you, you actually went to bars and they had it yeah. set up at bars, and you could. You know, play with your friends up on a stage. Because they have different instruments. It was more. Yeah, appealing. they had the drums. They, I think they eventually even got a keyboard, right? With three. Yeah, they had a yeah. Rock Band 3. I think by that time it was pretty much over, but Rock, by rock Band and Rock Band 2 were so popular. Uh, it was. It's nice to see them both coming back, but I've heard that rock, Guitar Hero is the much better offering this time around. I would say, because Rock Band 4 is pretty much the same game you remember it being. Like, looking at it, I'm like, this pretty much looks like the same. Guitar Hero has made substantial changes, though, and they pretty much are all successful, and they feel really good. That's good. I like that a lot. I really do. Playing anything else, Robbie? Yeah, so, especially the second half of the week, I have gotten so obsessively back into Skyrim on PC. And I have modded the shit out of it, and it is amazing. I have never really modded a game before. Like, I have, like, 85 mods installed on Skyrim. And it wow. just... There's so many small tweaks from, like, horse travel speed to, like, horse armor to, like, expansions to locations to quests. Like, everything. There's so many small, amazing tweaks. And I'm starting to get why people love mods so much, because it literally can change a game entirely. Like, there's whole new expansions people add. You can fix, like, any problem with the game. You can just... 
open it wide open and change mm -hmm. anything you want. And it's all optional. It's all free. It's kind of unbelievable. I was like, wow, like Skyrim is so good on PC because you can run it at 60 frames and it looks gorgeous and just adds so much to it. It's awesome. Are you still I playing really any know. Fallout 4? No, I haven't played Fallout 4 in a while because... Honestly, playing Skyrim 2 makes me realize how much bigger and more ambitious Skyrim was of the game. It just feels more complete to me. And Fallout 4, I loved every mode I played of Fallout 4. I love that game, but it doesn't... Once you kind of done everything, like, that's it. You don't really have a reason to go back into it mm -hmm. until, you know, DLC comes out or the mods, but Skyrim has a wonderful replayability to so, it. So, so, Robbie, did you, did you actually beat Fallout 4? I mean, because it sounds like you did. You said you I did it. literally everything in that game. I put 100 and... 10 hours into it. Like, I did everything there was to do. Wow. Yeah. Every location, every quest, I explored the map to no end. Like, yeah, everything. Okay, cool. It's interesting to me that you kind of put down Fallout 4 and went back to Skyrim. It's... I don't know. Yeah. I, I don't know if it's... Like, it's... I don't want to say it's there's a, bad a story thing, to yeah. be written about this, but it's telling to me somehow that Skyrim is pulling you back more than Fallout 4 is. Well, it's because I love Bethesda the Game Studios games, like any of them. They're my favorite games of all time, and Skyrim is probably my... Well, I'd say maybe Fallout 3 is my favorite one. I don't know which one I would rank, but Skyrim just... Yeah, it just has more replayability to it, and there's just well, more in there. there. There is a caveat here, though, Robbie. You are talking about Skyrim with 85 mods versus Fallout 4 as it is, so... Yeah, I, mean, I know. If you had Fallout 4 with tons of mods, you might still be playing that, you know, because... Yeah thing where you're doing Skyrim, so I don't think you would just go straight back to Skyrim as it was. Skyrim is like a four or five year old game, though. Yeah. Fallout yeah. 4 just came out. Yeah, and the thing is, we're getting mods even on the console versions of Fallout 4, which I can't wait for. Like, this has really gotten me into mods now on PC, and I get why people talk about it, because it's wonderful. Like, there's so much you can do, and you can customize a game to no end. It's crazy. It the, really way I, the way I feel about Fallout 4 compared to Fallout 3 is, of course, it's a it's higher graphical fidelity. It does look slightly better, but I think that they went with more quantity and and slightly better quality. I feel like the game is very similar to what we're used to in Bethesda games. Mm -hmm. It looks very similar to what we're used to, but they've added so much more to the world. So to me, they still feel extremely similar. I don't see that one is just head and shoulders incredibly you know superior to the other as far as Fallout 3 and Fallout 4. You know Fallout 4 is probably better, but for me, when you look at them both side by side... I don't know if it is better. It is and it isn't, honestly, to me. Part of me says Fallout 4 is a better game. It's refined everything that Fallout 3 did, but there's a part of me that says Fallout 3 still is more dear to well, my heart, and I still enjoy the, it more. The reason so. that you guys are saying that, and it's true, the reason that you guys believe that, and probably to the core of the gamer, especially to the Bethesda hardcore, Fallout 3 probably is a better game because it was the first time we experienced that world. Yeah. Fallout 4 isn't like a revolution. It's just it's, it, like, like, it's amazing at what it does, but it's more of the same. Like Briar, I heard you say this before in the other podcast, Briar. You could the first time you saw the Avengers film was amazing. Avengers two, you can't really do the same thing again. It's already been done. So right. Fallout Four, the ambition's already been set. The template yeah. has been made. The world has been realized. Now they're just realizing it slightly bigger with slightly more to do. So it's not you don't get the same sense of grand awe that you got the first time that you went right. out of the vault in Fallout 3. So and that's compared to Skyrim. Out. I think Skyrim was a bigger like improvement upon Oblivion than Fallout 4 was to Fallout 3. I would agree. I, I, would agree. Agree. I, I, I agree with that. Yeah. I would say that um, New Vegas is actually more compelling to play than Fallout 4. Fallout 4? You yeah. think so? Yeah. And, and that came a lot quicker on the heels of Fallout 3 than... Yeah. Fallout 4 came on New Vegas. Like, I was hyped for Fallout 4. Not as hyped as you guys, but pretty damn hyped. <laughs> Everyone was hyped. And I'm not going to lie. I'm, I'm overall, I feel pretty disappointed with that game. Mm. Yeah, that's very understandable. I mean, now going back and playing it like Fallout 4, I feel kind of disappointed in the fact that it didn't have, you know, the content as big of a world as I thought it would. Like, when I was playing it, I was like, I love this game. I'm addicted to it. I don't want to stop. It's phenomenal. And I still feel that way. But going back and playing it, I'm like, eh, maybe I kind of changed my mind about it. You know, like playing it now, I'm kind of like, it's not as much of a replayable game as I wanted. wasn't as compelling as it was in Fallout or in New Vegas, or Fallout yeah. or in New Vegas. Um, you're still dealing with the. You got the exact same computer hacking game. You got the exact same, you know, uh, lock picking mini game. Like so much of it feels like it's just the exact same as it was, you know, six yeah. years ago. But heavily refined. Uh, well, is it that heavily refined? 
there are certain things I feel like there. I, really I think there's some, some definite heavy refinement that, that was taking place in part four. But this is the thing that happened with me. I played it for the first week and a half straight. Yeah. Uh, and and I for the period of time that I played, I got I didn't get relatively far, but I was very fulfilled with the experiences that I had. I was like only level twenty, I believe twenty one or twenty two. Yeah. But for, for the time that I played, that was pretty damn far. I put tons of hours in. Uh, yeah. I, I stepped away from it for whatever the reason was. I don't know if it was a game or maybe a night out or something, and it came back, and then I was just like, mm, do I want to play that right now or do I want to play something a little bit shorter that I don't have to really invest so much time into? Yeah. And it, it became in my mind something that I felt like, uh, is it going to be a chore to get back into it? Maybe that's my mind playing tricks on me because the fact is when I played it, I had a fucking blast playing it. Yeah, you know, it's one of those situations, but I just felt like maybe if it was Fallout Three, I would have just played it all the way through because it's my first time experiencing it. Whenever I play Fallout Four, I still see the echoes of Fallout Three. So in my mind, I feel like I've already seen it, I've already played it, I've already completed it. It's just another part of that world. It's just not as engaging to me as yeah. it was the first time that I saw it. If that yeah. makes any sense. Yeah. I still think Fallout 4 is an amazing game, and it still holds up to Bethesda's other games. I don't think it's their single best game they've ever done, but it's still a phenomenal game. It's still excellent in a lot of ways. It really is. I still really love it. What do you think is their best, Rage? <laughs> no, right. that's, uh, no, that's id software. Um, oh, that's id. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, and no, it's published by Bethesda. Uh, I'd say either... Oblivion would probably be the most groundbreaking one, because Skyrim was... Another refinement. It wasn't the same as Fallout 3 to 4. It was a little more than that. I mean, my personal favorite is probably either 3 or Skyrim. I still love Oblivion, though, but it's hard to choose. I bought Morrowind on the... I think I told you guys this like a year ago. I bought Morrowind on the original Xbox. I played it. I tried to get into it. I didn't understand what it was. Yeah. And I was I was by myself at home. Didn't have any strategy, guys. Like, what the hell is this crap? Yeah. So I stepped away from it. And then when I saw the Oblivion in every game magazine on all the commercials many, many years ago, everybody was talking about it. You walk in GameStop, they were all talking about this game. And I look at it, I'm like, wow, it looks like a real world. Wow, look, look what they've done. Technology's really yeah. progressed. And I wanted to try it, but I was like, is this more like you know the original Morrowind? And then I got a strategy guide, and I went home and read it first. I like went through the book, and I was like, holy shit, there's so much stuff you can do. Then I played it, and that was probably my favorite Bethesda experience, uh, Oblivion. Yeah, it was wonderful amazing. game. It was amazing. It blew my mind. And we spent a half an hour talking about the shit. We yeah, we should get into some of <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, we we do. Do. I have no problem <laughs> talking about Skyrim and Fallout all day. I love those games to, get to death. I really do. You guys let us know in the comment section which Bethesda game is your favorite. Which one meant the most yeah, to you? It could be a nostalgic thing. It could be what you're playing now. Just let us know in the comments so we can see what the what the consensus is in the world. Robbie, you want to get us started off with the news, my friend? All right, let's get into the news for today. So our first piece of news, it's been a pretty recent trend in gaming that's been going on for the past couple of years, but, of course, Scalebound has been delayed to 2017. And I'm not too surprised about this because if you guys remember the demo from Gamescom, it was not running well at all. Like, mm -hmm. it was, the frame rate was not very good. So I'm not too surprised by this. You're going to have well, to wait another year for your headphones and dragons. Yeah, yeah I mean, your beats headphones <laughs> and dragons. Well, uh, Platinum, man, they're a very talented studio, but they got a lot on their They're brain. doing so many games, and they're like a small studio. Like, it, Are they doing Nier 2? Yeah, they're doing Nier 2. They're yeah, doing that's Star that's Fox. Like, like, tons of games. So, so I mean, lot. it's one of those situations, especially if you're just an Xbox guy and you're really looking forward to that game. Look, a lot of people on Xbox One are. You just got to wait. Sometimes you got to yeah. wait for good stuff, you know? The game looks like a lot of fun. Like, I've never gone into Monster Hunter, but this looks like something I would get into, and uh, they just need more time because Platinum's doing so much right now. It totally makes sense to me. They had need another year. They really do. So, All right. So, so, so keeping with the trend of games that are delayed, and also games that are really, you know, I guess people are excited about, ReCore for the Xbox One is also coming to Windows 10, and according to reports, the game has also been delayed until sometime this fall. And that's a game that a lot of people are excited for, Recore. But we've seen basically nothing of. I am looking forward to seeing uh, gameplay of that, because this is Armature's one. first real game. So. Say what, Briar? I, I didn't hear I'm you, Briar. I'm familiar with this one. This is the game where it showed a young lady and a little droid with her, and the droid had, like, a orb of light inside of it. Yeah, and do you remember this? It was nested at uh, E3. And, okay. and, yeah, uh, no, I'm looking at pictures of it now. I remember it. It was attacked, yeah. and, and that core of that droid, it, it's transferable to, to other... 
I guess, entities throughout the world, robots, and that core could be transferred to a dinosaur or another giant robot, and, and the spirit of whatever that little droid is takes over and fights alongside. I mean, I'm looking forward to seeing more of it, because we've seen literally nothing except for the E3 trailer. I like the so idea. I'm... I think the idea yeah. is awesome. Yeah, I mean, so if they implement it and, and it's executed properly, it'll be an awesome game for Xbox One, Windows TN. Windows they got 10. a good team behind it. They got KJ and Afuni working on it, and they got Armature, so it, sh it should turn out good. I mean, we'll have to see more of it. So, so more exciting news. For me, this is sleep news. I will sleep through this because I'm not into Assassin's Creed anymore. I hate it. I honestly do. Assassin's Creed Empire is the next, uh, next main entry in the series. It's set to launch in 2017. The game will be set in ancient Egypt. Watch Dogs 2 will launch this fall in its place. So, yeah, so first let's discuss Assassin's Creed, everything about this. I am... Everything about this is awesome to me. The fact that they're finally taking a year off because Unity was a broken buggy mess and they need this to give their development team more time. This is being made by the team that made Black Flag. That's another good thing right there. Ancient Egypt sounds like an awesome setting. Count me in. Like, this sounds awesome to me. This is what Ubisoft needed to do with this. I am really looking forward to it. I think Ubi, what Ubisoft needs to do with this is just fucking quit. I'm just so tired of it. At least they're taking a year off, though. Like I'm shocked when I heard about that. I thought there was no way they would delay a game for 2016. The story has become so convoluted. I feel like I'm watching thoughts in cursive. It's like it, you don't know where you're going with Assassin's Creed anymore. It's really, really hard to follow. With so I, much I actually thought happened. the most interesting part of this was that Kotaku broke this again. Yeah, like it was uh, <laughs> Sorry, a story, story again, like a year before the game comes. Well, now it's two years before the game comes out. Totally, they must have like some hella leak over there. Uh, just who talks to Kotaku? Kotaku just recently put up an article saying how like because of leaks like this, they can't. They, they can they get, they yeah, can they're getting blacklisted. blacklisted, and boom, they drop another one. I, I don't know. I found that to be the most important. They have side checks from Ubisoft, I guess. I mean, I don't know where they get their information, right? It's crazy. The Ubisoft does not want this information released, right? Like, no, absolutely not. They want to message this themselves, and Kotaku got it again. I think that's well, hilarious. I'm actually more <laughs> intrigued by the latter half of this news, though, Robbie. I'm more interested to see what they're going to do with Watch Dogs than I am with this new Assassin's Creed. You know, what are they going to do? Have Kanye West as the main character in Egypt? Um, and you would think, too, if it's coming this fall, that means it's got to be announced at E3, right? Like, it's got to yeah. be soon. Yeah, and, and you know, they're really going to hate Kotaku. <laughs> if this is totally true, which it probably is, because Kotaku is known for, you know, leaking stuff, and it ends up being right on the fucking head. But um, yeah. for me, Watch Dogs was kind of a flop. It was a letdown, and it had a lot of hype. A lot of people were super excited about it. I think that it's been, what, almost three years, two years since the game came out? 2014 it came out, yeah, May. It's and, almost two years. And, and so uh, they've had a lot of time to sit back, see the things they did wrong with the game, and, and kind of remaneuver it and turn it into what people really wanted. So I'm more excited to see what Watch Dogs 2 is versus yeah. Assassin's Creed 21. Is this 21? I couldn't care less. The first game was crap. What makes you think it's going to be hitting good the second time around? Well, you look at Assassin's Creed 1, it was kind of an okay game, and then Assassin's Creed 2 blew it out it of the awesome. water. They did everything That's right. That's what this could be. What this could be the Assassin's, Assassin's Creed 2. Hold on, hold on. You guys get way too excited for shit. Like, like you have no idea. I'm what telling you, you're like you're about. Learn from your mistakes. <laughs> it's not really. It's not really excitement. I mean, it's more of an ambitious curiosity. But let me the ask you a question, Yeah, the potential which, here is good. Which, which which Halo was your favorite one, Briar? The first one. Halo Two was your first, your favorite, wasn't it? No, the first one was my favorite. Oh, okay. Well, damn. Change your mind, old man. All right. I'm my own stuff, man. <laughs> the next one would probably be. I don't know. Halo One was my favorite by a long shot. Yeah. Yeah, Halo 2 is my favorite. Halo 2 is my favorite. you got to give Ubisoft some credit, though. Taking a year off of their annual franchise, I think this is bold for them. Like, I would have never seen them doing this. I think this is great that they're doing this. I really think they need more. You should give them more credit. Like, this is a really smart move for them. I think it is. Uh, uh, okay, it may be a good move. We'll they're see. They're always going to have Assassin's out. Creed. I'm but I'm not going to get hyped up for Watch Dogs 2 because the first game was shitty. And I'm definitely not going to get hyped up for another <laughs> Assassin's Creed. But it's in Egypt. That's so cool. Oh, I like that a lot. I think Not Too Nerdy Entertainment has taken over Briar Rabbit because he is the fucking <laughs> voice of truth right now. You really oh can't argue. God. You really can't argue with him. Nobody said that Watch Dogs was great, but he's coming out and just saying it was shitty. And, and I thought about it. Like, oh, it pretty much was. So, I mean, what can you really say? Let's just hope for the best. Keep our fingers crossed. Cross them four times. 
Um, <laughs> I, I would prefer Watch Dogs 2 to be to, to be good for me versus an Assassin's Creed game because I'm just done with Assassin's Creed. I just don't want to deal with it anymore. I am too, yeah, but too if many, we go back to the roots, come out. Say what, yeah, too many of them come out. Like there's no like, there's no yeah, pull for me to come back to that. It's like I've done that. I've like been there. I've done that. Like, yeah. Assassin's Creed. What are we on? Like ten? It's I'm done with it. Yeah. I don't know. It's yeah. got to rank up in the near ten, right? I mean, if, if they including, put a number, them, including the it, mobile games, it's yeah, gotta be up yeah. there. You know, I mean, it's 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 getting kind of out of hand, and I'm, yeah. I'm I don't want to deal with it anymore. I agree with you guys 100 percent, though. Like, I am tired of Assassin's Creed, and that's why I'm even more happy that they're taking a year off, so like we don't have to have another one for a year. Well, they just let it be more exciting. You know what would be good, Robbie? If that was a, a good strategy, and which I understand what you're saying, I'd prefer them to take like five years off like Rock. All right, so continuing yeah. on with news. Sony files a trademark for a video game software, and the title of the game is Days Gone. And this is really exciting news. A lot of people uh, have been speculating as to what this could mean. The, the name Days Gone is very, very similar to the original pilot episode of The Walking Dead Days Gone By. So yeah. people are really in the mindset that this could possibly be The Last of Us 2. The Last of Us 2 Days Gone, that's what I've heard. Initially, I was like, this is Sony Ben's game. I'm sure that's what this is. But then everyone's saying, this is going to be called The Last of Us 2 Days Gone. This is the what the subtitle for that is. I mean, I don't really know. Who knows? Well, it's, it's just pure, pure speculation. They yeah. could call The Last of Us 2 football and people would still buy it. So it doesn't really matter. I guess we'll know once. <laughs> really, still right. go kart racing. <laughs> yeah, holy oh, shit! Is Ellie in it? Um, yeah, it, it's one of those things, man. The Last of Us, whenever they announce, I think they're definitely going to do it. I think it's going to be the next game. Uh, people yeah. are going to be really excited about it, and until then, people are just going to keep speculating. I actually talked about this on my my channel this week. So. I think this E3 Last of Us Two will be announced because Naughty Dog has seemingly announced their next game like a month or two after their release. So Uncharted Four comes out in April. Then you go to May, and then June. I could see Last of Us too easily being it. Well, well, this is some information that I kind of juggled around in my mind. Neil Druckmann and Bruce Straley have stated that before they were pulled from the projects that they were working on to take over production of Uncharted 4 Thieves End, they were brainstorming ideas for The Last of Us 2. Characters, different yeah. scenarios, they were coming up with a sci-fi game, just a whole bunch of different things. So if they were moving away from The Last of Us 2 story to create other ideas for other games... Part of me, on some level, believes that if they're doing other things besides that, that they possibly had a storyline possibly nailed down. So. Well, from what you just said, that would make me think that that thing's not coming out till 2017 or 2018. Like, if they got pulled off of creating the storyline to make Uncharted 4, I mean, that's... Then they still... They gotta finish the storyline, and they also gotta program the damn thing. Yeah, <laughs> yeah but that's true. Create the game. That takes a while. But during that interview, they didn't just say they were, they were throwing around ideas for The Last of Us. They said that they were doing deep ideas about The Last of Us, too, as far as the, the world, new characters, old characters. And they said after that, they were coming up with ideas for completely new titles. So mm -hmm. I'm thinking that if they're going to make new games, that they wouldn't just move away from a partially realized idea to, to form another partially realized idea. The way in my mind it works is you work on something, you come up with something, once that's solidified, then you move to something else. So in my mind, they may have already come up with at least a fundamental idea of what The Last of Us 2 is going to be. Ta-da! All right, Robbie, would you like to continue, my friend? Uh, where are we? Oh, yeah, right there. So this is another game that uh, a lot of people miss because of a certain Fallout 4. Rise of the Tomb Raider is coming to PC on January 28th. Just buy this game. It's a wonderful game. I don't care what platform, it deserves to be played. I did. Right here. Right, got it. Yeah. Hey. I would have played it this weekend, but I, there's no Wi-Fi. You took the plastic off? Not yet. <laughs> I want to see a picture of that right next to Far Cry. The plastic games. <laughs> Fucking awesome. Yeah, um, this game has gotten a lot of awards. A lot of people have said that this is uh, Xbox One's game of the year, man. Yep. Uh, so it's something I definitely, definitely want to play. For sure. Awesome. I've had a, a lot of people tell me it's a better game that came out that day. <laughs> huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot of people are saying that. Yeah, absolutely. So. And no one played it. Kind of sad how hype can kill something that's done right, right? Yeah. yeah. Wow. It's like your grandma cooking you a pie and then everybody going to McDonald's and buying the two for one. God damn it. All right, so Oculus Rift pre orders have gone live. The headset will cost $599 and will begin shipping March 28th. What do you guys think about this? It's a high price, man. 
here's what I'm going to say. People were definitely upset because some people thought maybe it would be cheaper, maybe it would be closer to $400, $500. When I saw this price tag, I was like, yeah, I mean, I saw it coming. Like, the, the thing you have to consider is this is virtual reality, right? Like, this is a brand new technology. This is a first of its kind, a first generation headset. Of course, it's going to be expensive. This is like cutting edge technology. This is something that's never really been done before. So, of course, it's going to cost a lot of money, but I honestly thought it would be more than this. I'm not upset at all with this price. I mean, it's still well, a lot of money, for sure. I mean, but this price will drop pretty quickly, too. Yeah. Right yeah. now, it's coming with pack-ins, like an Xbox One controller. Uh, Two games. Yeah, so I think if, if they could strip down what comes with it, I think they're, they're including the pack-ins to kind of uh, you know, set a baseline, like here's how people are going to play games with this, so here's what you should develop for, here's your target for development. I think once they can pull out the Xbox One controller, once they get uh, their kind of manufacturing efficiencies uh, flowing a little better, yeah. this thing can come down in price. I think it's not going to it's not going to be a mass consumer. It's not going to be mainstream. It's not going to start it's not gonna be mainstream yeah. at this price, but if they can get it down to 400 I think it could gain some traction, but that might take them a year or two. Yeah, and, and so if it's $600 in America, it was in Canada like 2100 bucks. <laughs> it's closer to $900, I believe, here. It's oh, a lot. Hotel. Yeah. Oh. Since the Canadian well, dollar uh, and, and on the top of that, is not good. On top of the, the revealed price tag for this thing, they announced some of the PC specs, and you're going to have to really have a PC that can pump out some shit to get this thing to yeah. work accurately. Yeah. Luckily for Mr. Ryan, you're, you're good to go, Brian, right? You got 10 yeah. USB ports and all that stuff. <laughs> I'm, I'm going hard on this thing. I'm yeah. actually, you know, at this price point, I'm gonna, I think I'm going to wait on this because I don't want to buy a $600 Oculus Rift and then nobody supports it because nobody's buying it, right? That's, yeah. the, that's the problem with an accessory like this is that, you know, it can do any number of... Uh, wondrous things, but if nobody buys it, then nobody's no gonna software, it. yeah, there's no it's reason. It's going to be a piece of shit that sits on, you know, in the closet with a half dozen other accessories that never worked out. Yeah, same thing happened with the Nokia N-Gage. It was just incredible. Nobody bought it. Yeah. I think Do you, you have... Think uh, uh, this be, <laughs> can this thing be successful at $600? Do you think this is a reasonable price? No. Oh, well, no. You don't think so? No. The thing is, guys, all right, we got to put this into context, okay? This is a very, this is a premium piece of hardware, right? On yeah. top of that, people spend this amount of money annually for fucking phones. Yeah, this is a top of line VR headset, and this is brand new tech. Real. This is not unreasonable at all. People were overreacting to this a lot. Right. It is, it is a video game headset. I mean, six hundred dollars is a huge outlay. We are on a show about video games. We do a podcast about video games. Of course, we're going to be more hyped about this thing than a lot of other people, but $600 is a major outlay. Oh, that that's a, a huge lot investment. Of money. Yeah, 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 it yeah. doesn't matter what it is. It, that's a lot. And they ha I think I think it's imperative that they get the price down. I can see it launching at this. Like it doesn't shock me. I don't find it to be like I don't think it's like a death knell for Oculus Rift, but I do think that they're going to have to get it down to the $400 range uh, within the next couple of years. Otherwise, you know, the early adopters are going to pick this thing up. Well, yeah. it's, already, it's already sold out, the pre-orders, and I don't know what that number was. but it, from Yeah, what I don't I know mean, what that number is either. Quick, yeah. Well, this is my thing, right? Look at Apple. Briar, you're an Apple lover, right? I don't even think you have an orange in your house. Um, <laughs> the, the thing is, people upgrade their damn iPhones every single year, and people spend tons of money on these things, and that's just for the the technical, I guess, glitter. You want the newest no, thing. Okay, so the difference between an iPhone and an Oculus Rift headset is huge. Your The iPhone or any, any handset that you have is probably the most personal piece of technology you've ever used in your life. You always have it on you. It's become invaluable. It's your, it gives you directions. It keeps you in contact with your friends. Uh, it answers it any questions that you have. Takes uh, out the trash. You know? I mean, it's unbelievable the revolution that these phones have had for us. He has it in his hand. <laughs> well, I mean, you do. You, got, you don't have your, your phone within reach? No, man. It's a Sony. I'll call him and roll in here. Uh, no, um, it's a, you know, the difference between a, a, a I, handset, I like a phone, and a, 
the Oculus Rift is going to be sitting at your computer waiting for you to play video games. It's a yeah, big I, difference. I totally agree, and and I, maybe I did skew the, the similarities, I guess, in that sense. But what I'm saying is, people repeatedly go out and spend this kind of money every year, you know. And I know six hundred dollars is not something to, to scoff at; it's a lot of money. But yeah. the fact is, there's tons of people who spend this much money, I guess, every year who don't need to upgrade. People yeah, there are going to be people who buy this day one and just don't look the other way. They're going to buy. There's, going to I, there's no doubt there's going to be people, people who buy this day one. Yeah. But I don't think it's going, I don't to, be think it's going to be enough to like warrant a developer saying, "Oh my God, we have to start developing for this right now." I well, agree. Yeah. This is my my argument, and and you guys know I'm a I'm a console gamer first. I bought a PC for um, Daisy. I think I played it like for four hours. But um, <laughs> when it comes to <laughs> just being Great honest, like, what, there. what the hell am I doing here, honey? <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> for me. The Oculus, the, the practical applications are going to be amazing. It's going to be able to do so much more than just gaming, okay? And that's yeah. a very nice incentive. But for me, the the addition of all this hardware I'm going to need for a PC kind of just it, it negates yeah. the possibility of me doing it. I'm on a laptop, which is a fairly decent laptop. I don't have a desktop sitting around here. We're in a laptop family. There's five laptops here. So I have to completely reinvest in something that's upgradable and ready to run this thing. And on top of that, I have to spend $600. So for me... I'm going to stick with the PlayStation VR. The people who will buy the Rift will already have a high-end PC. Like, those will be the people who buy it. They'll already have that rig ready to go for it. Well, unless they're smart, because Briar has a PC. He can talk to God on his. And he still said, no, he's going to wait. I, I really think I'm going to wait on this one. Yeah, I mean... Yeah, I want to see... I wanna, you know what I want is an application that says, this thing is so good that it justifies the purchase. Absolutely. It needs to be the carnival game. All right, so uh, Robbie, would you like to continue? This is going to be some, uh, definitely in 2016, this is going to be a huge thing. Nintendo is going to officially unveil the concept of the NX sometime between March and May, and a full reveal of the console will be coming sometime in June, supposedly around E3. Yeah, I think so. I mean, I could definitely see that happening. They need to actually hit that stage. They don't need to do, do a, a Nintendo Direct. Yes, I agree with you, 100%. They have to do a conference for this thing. If they do a direct showing this hardware, that is never going to work. They need to get go back to E3. They need a conference to say, shit's on, we are back, here's this thing, here's why you should be excited about it. Show the hardware, show the price, show the launch of the lineup, get Legend of Zelda on it from day one. That's what they need to do. This is such an important year for Nintendo. This is going to shape the future of the company going it's forward. Like this moment. fails... They're not going to make another console. This is it for them. They have to succeed with this. They really do. There's so much. I don't think that they they won't make another console. It just doesn't. It won't succeed. There's no way though. Like this is the last chance. This is what they need to do. They need to go to E3. They need to hit that that stage. They need to be engaging, exciting. They need to show a product that's amazing that graphically can stand up to the competition. They need to show a real, fully realized Mario 3D game. They need to show some fucking. Metroid, they need to show Legend of Zelda, and they need to do that for the fans, too. They yeah. need to bring people back and make make us remember what it was about Nintendo that we liked years ago. They need to have something also for the people who grew up with Nintendo who don't want to fucking play with mushrooms anymore. I'll play with a mushroom all the time, but it's not a video game. Yeah. Nintendo has not grown with their audience either. They're still towards that kid-friendly, family-friendly approach. You need to have a more powerful console going forward. The most important thing for them is to get third parties. And I know what people are going to say. They're going to be like, oh, people buy the Nintendo consoles for first parties. Why aren't people buying the Wii U then? Because there are plenty of first party games on it. Yeah, you well, need those third party deals to get people on board. Because if you have a console, if you can get third party games like Call of Duty and Destiny and Mario on the same platform, that's going to kill it. They yeah, need right. that. They've got, right. new, leader. They've got yeah. new leadership. They've got new leadership. They need to have a new plan and a new strategy. Third parties, that goes without being said. We all know that they need that. They have to. But, but they need to also start developing games for people who are hardcore gamers. Yeah. Bring that world into Nintendo so that you can walk into a Toys R Us or a game I would argue store. they're doing that right now. I'd argue Mario Maker is a hardcore game. You said it is? Yeah. Uh, I haven't played it yet. I, I hear it's amazing, but I it haven't is, played yeah. it um, I, I think that if they can release something that is, you know, on par with or a little bit more powerful than the current Xbox One and PS4. Yeah. Um, and also has kind of a PC architecture. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, they need to make this be easy for developers. Just they can get, get third parties over really quick. It'd be a relatively easy thing to port games over, and I'd be happy to play Destiny on a on a Wii three or whatever they end up calling this. Oh, thing. Yeah. No, they need to get away from the Wii game. <laughs> but it's gonna uh, fail them. But ultimately, I think what they're gonna do is they're going to have some kind of comp- compilation or combination of a portable and a home system that is going to be completely, you know, Nintendo-built, Nintendo-designed. It's yep. not going to be, you know, based on PC architecture. It's not going to appeal to third-party <laughs> third party developers. I'm it's worried. Very, 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 very cool. It may have really awesome Nintendo games, but I don't think that at this point Nintendo really cares that much about the third party. But they need to. They absolutely I don't think they do. Why do they need to? Tell me that. Why do they need to? Because if you have those first parties on board plus your third parties, I mean, that's going to kill it. They need those relationships, and to get third parties back on board, if they have a more powerful console, that'll be easy for them to convince well, them. Well, the, the not they, sell, they sell a ton of consoles, they sell a ton of games, uh, and they're Nintendo games. They make a ton of profit. And, and a lot of those third party developers and par- partnerships and relationships are not going to be just healable. You're not going to be able to fix a lot they of... They are with money, and Nintendo has a lot of money to shell out for third-party deals. They can get these deals, and I think over time they can get third parties back on board. Even oh, if they come yeah. out of E3 and say, here's Destiny they're 2 just going on to port NX. The games they're making for PS4 and Xbox One over to it. Yeah, I think that's what's going to happen. I mean, you saw that with um, Black Ops 2 for the Wii. You know, I mean, was it the Wii U? Yeah, Wii U. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Some of these games are going to be coming to the next uh, Nintendo console. Big developers, big uh, publishers, Activision, they're going to jump on board. I, I just hope, in the bottom of my heart, I hope that they show something that's going to blow us away and make us really look at Nintendo again as a serious contender here. And, and, and instead of just Sony and Microsoft, we'll have the big three again. Because, honestly, it's not really. I don't feel that way anymore when I talk about you know the big consoles or the big video game companies. Yeah, Nintendo almost isn't a big three. They're losing it. Like, they're getting out of it more and more. Well, they, they, they're going actually... to come out with a Nintendo console. It's going to be... It's going to say Nintendo all over it, right? It's going to... It's going to like a get, like, a, you know, a PS4 with Nintendo on it. You're wrong. It's not going to be that. I There's think no they're going to learn their mistakes, though, and come out and say, here's the hardware. It's more powerful than the PS4 and Xbox One. Show me One. anything that points in that direction, though. Like, show me any evidence that points in the direction that Nintendo's going to do something like that. Well, see, the thing is, that's kind of what Because Sony... they've learned from the Wii U. What, what tells you that? Well, nothing does, to be honest. Um, and that's totally le- legit argument, Briar. But the thing is, Sony was going that direction as well. Look what, look what happened with the cell processor. They were trying to walk to the beat of their own drum, create their own technology, and it yeah. kind of backfired on them. Maybe Nintendo's in that same boat that Sony was in last generation. They you know, like, maybe they okay, are, and maybe they've learned. Possible. But I haven't seen any evidence whatsoever, none, well, if you, that if you look Nintendo's at it, right, changing direction. Game, GameCube had fucking discs the size of an olive. Okay, and it was really hard to port games to that. The Wii was a, a console that graphically couldn't stand up to the competition, had a very strange control setup. Mm-hmm. They didn't really learn from that. The Wii U is not as powerful as a competition. You know, it's kind of a last-gen system. Yeah. Big fucking controller in your hand looks like a tablet. Right. Maybe they're not going to learn. I mean, if you look at the trending history says that they're not going to learn, but you feel like in the, in, the, in your mind at some point they have to. I feel point, like they gotta, finally will learn. I think they're going to be like Sony with the PS4. They're going to say, we've learned from our mistakes. We have powerful hardware now. We have something that's easy for developers to develop for. We've improved our network. They need to do that, too. They really need a better network. Briar, that's another Briar, one. Briar, I will say this. Right now is a great time for them to completely change their their project projected, uh, I guess, the way that the company is perceived. Yeah. Because they've got new leadership. More than likely, the NX has already been in development, so I don't know if new leadership was, can actually change I was thinking that, that. Too, Wada died, so maybe like the new leadership would point them in a new direction. But if you think about it, this thing's been in development. It's been in development yeah. for probably a couple of years. Uh, yeah. So we'll see what happens. You know, it, but uh, I'm telling you now, it's going to be exciting to watch. I think it will be. Gonna... And I can tell I you that NX... all three of us buy one, no matter what it is. <laughs> yeah, they're right. I swear. <laughs> There's something that tells me, though, Nintendo is going to wake up and they're going to be like Sony learning. They're going to get this, and they're going to be like, here that, we go. We have I think that's console. hope. That's faith. That's like irrational thinking to, 
uh, there's nothing out there that should tell you that. Which is the best thing about this. We don't know anything about the NX. They can they have a clean slate. They can come out and blow everyone. That's my point. Is we don't know anything about this thing. There's no evidence that says they're going to do any of this. There's never been anyone on the record, Robbie, saying that we're going to go a different direction. We're going to try new things. They've been Nintendo, and Nintendo is like we're going to stay on our path. That's what they've always done. Yeah. And, and the trending history prior is telling the truth. There's really no reason for anybody to think that this is going to be different. The only Absolutely. thing is going to change. Once we see it, it's like a buddy of mine at work says, I won't believe the shit till I see it. You guys saw that, patent, you saw that patent of that controller. Yeah, it's a Nintendo fucking controller. It yeah. sure as hell is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we'll so see, like, guys. You're not, you're not porting games for the PS4 or the Xbox One onto that controller. Yeah. It looks like an envelope. Yeah, I mean, you're right. <laughs> I think the best thing about the NX right now is that it's shrouded in mystery, right? Like Nintendo I think the best thing is we don't know what the fuck want. it is yet. Yeah, absolutely right. We do. <laughs> We're gonna yeah. like, this. Right. You're right, Briar, because we don't. Look how excited Robbie and I am. You know, we, we're just hoping in the back I of our I want to believe that Nintendo can do it, and I feel like they can, and I hope they realize. But there is a chance, yeah. Like they, We don't know what they're doing yet, so we'll have to wait and see well, what this few, thing it's is. It's only a few months away. We've got plenty of games to play. Yeah. Let's just... Absolutely. They, they create the right move. So look, let's move on, guys. I don't want to stay on the Nintendo too long. Might get bad luck. Mafia Three will release on April twenty sixth, according to leaks. Mafia Two is a good game, very underrated. I am looking forward to this. Well, if, if it comes out, good news. Uh, and it's according to a leak, so you know, take it with a pinch of salt. Sony twenty sixteen developer conference in May will heavily focus on VR, and I'm not surprised by that. Sony has said that they have over 200 developers working on PlayStation VR technology. They're on the PlayStation VR early list to create games, and there will be over 100 VR games released uh, within the first year of PlayStation VR. So it's exciting. Good to know. That's what Sony VR says. games. What do you, you what think that said. means like mini game compilations? Possibly. More than <laughs> <What's> the, <laughs> that that seems to be an aggressive awesome. number. <laughs> yeah. So when I mean, put the smart. And it seems impressive. It's really not. But, we got you know. fifty. We got fifty PlayStation games for one ninety nine in the PlayStation Store. See it today. Um, yeah, right. <laughs> that will be the first fifty. All right. So, and this is our last little bit of news. And, and I covered this. I have a, a story about this on my channel now. Amazon Canada may have revealed the price of PlayStation VR to be around eight hundred dollars. Don't do it, Sony. Don't, don't do it. Gonna, I this, don't think this is. If they do this. This thing is dead in the water. Yeah. There is no chance of salvaging this. Do yeah. not be this stupid and have it twice the price the PS4. You cannot do that. They can't. Uh, well, the thing is, there's been a lot of speculation that this post is actually for a kit, which included like a bundle. Yeah, the bundle and a PS4 games. Uh, that would be much more that comes with it. I cannot see it in my in, the, in my mind's eye or whatever, as Scott Pilgrim would say, that. Sony would do this. It just doesn't make any sense at all. It seems that Sony learned their lesson with the PlayStation 3, $600. Yeah. They really screwed themselves. I don't think they go back there. I feel like I they've probably learned from that, too. And there is a slight chance, though. There's something telling me that maybe the, it is just such an expensive technology, VR, that maybe they don't want to lose costs and they would put it at this price. But I doubt it. I don't see it happening. I, mean, that, I don't see it happening. No way. Nobody's buying that thing. They can't do that. No that would be suicide. I mean... There's no way. I, I wouldn't buy it immediately. That's a situation where you're saving up for a couple of fucking paychecks. Well, you know how Sony likes their aspirational products. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, mean, I could see myself buying it, but I can also hear the conversations around it. I walk in the house and say, what's, what's for dinner? Noodles, motherfucker! I'm like, okay. Robin, <laughs> again. <laughs> Put a hot Realist- in there, baby. <laughs> Realistically, though, this thing is probably going to be three hundred or four hundred dollars. That's my guess. Well, if, you, look at it, if you imagine that this is a bundle, right? If, imagine that this is an eight hundred dollar bundle that comes with a PS4, maybe a couple of games, yeah. probably PlayStation Move controllers. Um, then you can see it landing at three to four hundred dollars. Like, that's yes, what I, yeah. I yeah, think definitely. it's going to come with PlayStation Move controllers, so that's going to add to the cost of the unit. Uh, you know, you don't need a bundle. It does have to have the PlayStation Eye uh, or the PlayStation Camera. That's going to add to the cost of it. So, you know, four hundred dollars with all that stuff in the box. You might be two seventy nine without it. it you're going to need all of that stuff, though. You're going to have to yeah. buy it to use it. I, I yeah. have all. I already have all that. I got PlayStation Moves. I got the PlayStation Camera. 
Yeah. It's just like the Oculus Rift bundle. They put all this stuff in, and it's like if they took it out, would it be cheaper? Like, would that be the better idea, or do they no. want that value proposition? Uh, it's, uh, that bundle adds up in cost, if you think about it. $800. If it came with a PlayStation 4, the headset, the Move controllers, oh, yeah. uh, a regular That's controller, so cool. and yeah, a camera, controller. $800, it's like right there. Yeah, yeah you're right. No you're absolutely right. With a four hundred dollar price point on the VR headset. Now, now, Briar, uh, referring to the statement you made earlier about Oculus Rift and how you wanted to just postpone that purchase because you don't know exactly, you got to wait and see the trend. If people are going yeah. to actually be buying this thing, so developers can develop for it. You feel the same way about PlayStation VR? Is this something that you feel? And I'm really hyped bit- about VR. I want to get excited, but I haven't seen that app yet. I haven't seen that it, one game that just like blows me away. And it's really getting it. concerning because now these things are going to come out this come out. year. Yeah, and I still haven't seen it. Yeah, like, I've seen some cool tech demos, but tech demos, you know, they're going to last you ten minutes, and you're going to be like, "Where's the meat on this bone?" That's just immediately you get excited for it. It's not with long term. That's the killer app. That's what I brought right. this thing for. It's check, just check an out, idea right? of what the technology can do. Yeah, this is how I feel, right? I feel the same way you do, Brian. The apps and games that they've shown have left me feeling a little underwhelmed, right? PlayStation Experience totally underwhelmed when they showed the games. Now, the, the other side of that coin is everyone who I've ever heard who's actually played those games said that they were the best games they ever played in their life. So I think that there's a disconnect between what we're seeing and what people who put their headset on are experiencing. And I think that that is the paradigm shift. I think that once you put this thing on and you realize this is no longer a screen, that you're actually in a world, your whole perception of what the game is changes. Because not one person have I ever heard, and I've listened to a lot of people take the headset off and just go right into the way they felt playing it and their experience, everybody just eyes water. They say, this is the most amazing thing I've ever seen in my life. Yeah. And, and they never yeah. say, the game looks blocky, it looks horrible, the polygon VR is pretty amazing. Everywhere. Everybody says, this is a, a new way to play, and I'm super excited yeah. about it. I just hope the price isn't this high. I'm going to be an early adopter of PlayStation VR. I'm going to get rid of my couch, my, my wife... I would hope to go get for one of them kids. You know, maybe uh, maybe sign them up for like a, a little job where they could uh, make you a little extra cash under the See, table. I, you know, I want to move back up north because there's a lot of shoveling snow, and down yeah. here is oh yeah, cool. Mow, but down here they're shoveling lawns. shit. Mowing lawns. Yeah, but down here they shovel oh, shit. Boy. So I think I'm yeah. going to do a job tomorrow. You know, those those little tiny fingers are good at cleaning out grease traps. <laughs> You're absolutely right. <laughs> What kind of father are you, Briar? Oh my god! We're, we're the same. Kind Literally of the worst kind. <laughs> Not even have to say. Literally. Literally. I was thinking it. <laughs> so I'm, I'm, I'm really excited about it, uh, Robbie. How do you feel about PlayStation VR? Is it something that you think you'll be adopting early on, or are you going to wait? I mean, just in general, you guys can take it from me because I have a VR headset and I can hey, see. We're not talking about that now. I'm just asking you a question. Yes or no, motherfucker? Briar watched a 90s rap video movie today, and it kind of translated through me. I'm in the hood, G. PlayStation <laughs> VR is closer to $300 or $400. I'll be excited for it. And I think VR has an amazing amount of potential. Like, I've used VR now, and I'm like, this is – it feels like the future when you put it on. It really does. And this feels like the, it's going to be the way we consume media going forward. Absolutely. I will get PlayStation so, VR if it's got a reasonable price and good amount of games. So from the sounds of it, Robbie, you're 100% in. Perfect example. You played it. You're in. Well, in VR, yes. Like the, I love virtual reality. I'm the totally tech, in on that. Technology. Okay. The okay. Tech, I'm totally in. Well, yeah. I, I haven't played it yet. Part of me is telling me that once I do, you can't remove that experience from your memory, and the world changes from that point. Part of me believes that. Once you put on the the, the headset and you play a game, and it's a fun game, and you're in that world, part of you is like, this is the future. And, and that's what I feel like. And I that's what it feels that. like it does, yeah. All right, so... VR has an amazing amount of potential. It does. Can you guys imagine PlayStation VR pornography? Better yet, can you guys imagine, not Guitar Hero, but Porn Hero? Can you imagine the peripherals that you use? I... <laughs> I can just see I, the story. I don't know what to say. <laughs> I store on the board now. I'm still giving you what kind of words to use here. Uh, <laughs> yeah, the best the best option is lack of words. Okay. I could just see it now. Your mom. You know, there's in. a reason why well, I guys, two that balls was at the bottom. Episode ninety five. <laughs> 
there's a reason why you, they put two balls on it so you can string them like that. You go like this. There you go. That moment when your mom walks in and says, I'm not going to play this game. Dildo here coming next year. Oh, no. How did this happen? Robbie's <laughs> wrong. Brian, Robbie's 100% in now, okay? You can't <laughs> He's, like, like, he just, he's not dipping his toe in the water anymore. He just jumped yeah, in the fucking pool. Porn yeah. <laughs> girls VR. Don't believe me, Robbie. Don't believe Oculus Rift. <laughs> what? Porn? Hell yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this has got real bad real fast. <laughs> I can see the cameraman. Serious <laughs> pornography. Oh, I really enjoyed the show, guys. I, mean, I, I hope you guys had a good time with that spoofing off. Uh, it feels good to be back. It really does. It feels really good to be back. Good to have you back, Beasley. Thanks, man. I mean, you were back last week. You were back last week. You probably didn't. You didn't feel right about it because you were on the phone. But it didn't feel like you were really well, back, well, Beasley. Last, last week, I don't know if the screen was black or not, but if it was, at least the people who may not have known who I was knew I was black. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. you just put two, two eyes in the middle of the screen. Everything I talked. Like, wow, BC Gamer is black confirmed. Oh my God, BC! After the show, I got to tell you what my my wife found in the basement. <laughs> Oh, God, okay. <laughs> Ridiculous thing. I'm All right, guys. Thank you very much for hanging out with us. Beastly, you got anything you want to pimp for the next upcoming week? You guys, check out the channel. There's a shit ton of stuff coming out. I'm telling you, every day there's going to be three videos popping up. So enjoy that. Uh, leave any comments in this video for things you guys might be interested in us doing. We're going to try to get together sometime soon and do the Beastly Thoughts gameplay. So we're going to play some games, hopefully, oh, for the, for the yes. next couple of weeks. That would be fun. And, um, yeah, that's about it. Just news and gaming on the Beastly Gamer Channel. I'm the Beast. I'll see you guys next time. <laughs> Robbie, what are you getting down with this week? Skyrim's probably going to continue to take over my life, so uh, nothing. Dragons and balls. Sorry. Yeah, I'm just going to be playing Skyrim. I mean, I don't know. Uh, it's 2011 all over again. I can't stop playing it now. Just back into it. <laughs> God, it's so good. What about it's you, Briar? So it's by now. Smog. Playing that poor <laughs> girl VR this week, Briar? <laughs> Right, right, so now that you got your wife and the Wi-Fi, what's going to be happening with you this Dude, week? Okay, so I want to get into Tomb Raider. If I do not tell you at the beginning of next week's show that I played the shit out of Tomb Raider, you have full permission to like seriously rip me because I can't gotcha. wait to play this game. Yeah, <laughs> put down <laughs> Destiny just for a week and play. <laughs> I am going to be playing some Destiny. I got yeah, a new episode. Of, <laughs> I got a new episode of Sharded or Keep It coming out this week. Uh, so hopefully people get excited for that. Ooh. I think that's about it for me. Yeah, Brian, take your time with that Tomb Raider. Those games, they do take some dedication. And I, I, I really enjoyed the laugh when Robbie said, don't play Destiny. He's like, ha, 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 motherfucker, please. Um, <laughs> enjoy playing Destiny. I just said all over again. I'm really anxious to see what you say about it because if you told me it's really good, I swear I'm going to go and buy it next week. So yeah, wonderful game. Definitely as much time as you can without you know, just delving deep in and your wife coming, your, your feet are sticking out of the back of the TV. Don't get that deep into it. Just let me know if you enjoy it and let everybody know how good it is. Look forward to that. Excellent game. You should buy it. Absolutely beastly. Wonderful okay. game. I said if Briar tells me, motherfucker. Buy it right now. Buy it right now, motherfucker. Come on. <laughs>